We're sitting here with Lee Pappert, 10 years, Dallas International Film Festival. So let's talk about the theme. So, you know, the theme obviously is 10 years. Tell us a little bit more. Well, Deb, we're very excited to celebrate our 10 years. Obviously, it's uh, been an a, a interesting and fun and exciting time doing this in our mission to celebrate and champion the art of film. We're excited about it, and, and we're, we're doing a few things to kind of honor uh, our past and, and also honor where we are here in Dallas to celebrate the 10th anniversary. Uh, one of them is the fact, and, and you know, we are, it says Dallas International Film Festival, so we always love to honor our local filmmakers and local efforts to champion film. And this year we have some, some great movies that have strong Dallas ties, and we're thrilled to be able to have them be a strong part of what we're doing. Uh, films like Occupy Texas and Three Days in August, uh, Queen of the South, which is a TV show, but we're going to have the Texas premiere of their uh, one of their episodes. It's filmed in Dallas. I mean, and we love seeing film production occur in the city. That's exciting. The movie Signs of Humanity is a great story made by a local Dallas professor. A uh, documentary talking about the homeless issue, and we're thrilled to be able to work with Willie and his team uh, and, and partner with some groups to tying into that. Uh, and then to honor as well the Dallas Winds uh, and John Williams. Um, I think you know we partnered with the American Film Institute the first three years yep. uh, and where it was a great partnership and we continue to work with those guys on a lot of different things um, and they're honoring this year they're honoring John Williams as their lifetime achievement award winner uh, and we thought that was a great way to pay homage to, to that event as well so we're going to have a concert. We're going to have the Dallas Winds join us on stage. We're going to do a 30-minute John Williams concert. Some music from Star Wars and E.T. and uh, the movie 1941 and some other things. Uh, and then they're, uh, we're going to show the movie E.T. And absolutely thrilled to be able to do that with Henry Thomas being there. Elliot's going to be here. Why E.T.? I mean, there's a lot of films that John Williams have done, but why E.T.? What, what spoke to you about that? Well, E.T. is just one of those... <coughs> long-standing great movies. I mean, I, I watched it in the early 80s when it came out and absolutely loved it. And, and I think it holds completely together uh, now as a movie and we're absolutely thrilled with that. Uh, and it's just a great movie. And plus you get to have Elliot there. Elliot's going to be there. Henry Thomas is joining us and that's going to be fun. So talk to us about how you're paying homage to the last 10 years. As you said, the first three years was AFI Dallas and we turned into the Dallas International Film Festival. What are we going to see at this year's festival that pays homage to all 10 years? Well, uh, you know that um, every time we screen a movie, um, we Tend, we need to say thank you to the folks who make that possible. So our festival trailer this year uh, has a lot of clips from past film festivals. Uh, so in the, when you're watching those movies, when you're going to see your movie, you're going to see, it, in essence, a little highlight reel of past film festivals. And we're doing multiple uh, multiple different trailers so you won't see the same one every single time you're gonna see three or four different ones going to go up on screen so you get to see highlights a, a sizzle reel basically every time you go see it uh, including highlights from all the different past film festivals and so that's 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 one thing we're doing obviously what we're doing with mr. Williams and the AFI thing is another part having a strong contingent of Dallas films is important to us and that's another big part um, you know and we're you know, doing our best to reach out to past friends, past supporters, past board members and all that, trying to get them to be a part of what we do and, and attend some of these folks so we can acknowledge um, their past as well. I know you guys started to plan this festival literally a week after the last festival ended. Yeah, so maybe, maybe two weeks. But maybe yeah, two weeks. That's okay, right. so we'll just say two <laughs> weeks. So what went into the first stages of the planning of this year's festival? What, what was we got to do this, what was the must-haves? Talk us about kind of the planning on how this all came together because the film lineup this year is spectacular. Well, thank you. Thank you for saying that, by the way. Our programming team has done an incredible job. Um, the, you know, the first thing we want to do is we want to look at the dates and what's going on. We want try to think of a few uh, big things that we might be able to do to tie in. You know, just because it's the 10th anniversary doesn't necessarily mean that we have an extra million dollars to do big things so um, we have to be you know judicious in what we uh, look at and what we want to do one of the things we did we were at the Dallas City Performance Hall a couple of years ago for opening night and then we've also done a couple other film screenings there last summer we love that building we love that venue so 
Uh, it, it is a, 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 a city of Dallas venue in the Dallas Arts District. It's bigger than our normal venues. Uh, it's absolutely gorgeous and it's a great place to watch a film. So we thought how neat would it be to be able to have uh, a kind of a whole opening weekend at the City Performance Hall and fill it with films that will draw big crowds and, 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 and be a, an homage to Dallas. So that was a big effort on us to be able to work with the City of Dallas, to work on the dates, to have the opportunity to schedule four nights in the City Performance Hall. And that's important, very important to us. Um, and we're thrilled that we're going to be there. And we're going to have four great nights there. A big chunk of your professional career has been in the arts community in yeah. different organizations and I find that very unique that we don't really see that in either festival directors or people that run festivals around this country so talk to me a little bit about the importance of bringing the arts community together because I know in the past we worked with the Dallas Museum of Arts we worked with the Arts District so tell me how important it is for film to cooperate and work with non-film entities like the Dallas City Performance Hall. Well we you know, the, it, it is important. Film absolutely is an art form. That's our whole mission, is to celebrate the art of film. Uh, it is a film, uh, a film is an, an art form that incorporates uh, uh, the art of painting, it incorporates the art of music or music writing and, 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 and performance, it incorporates acting, stuff from the theater, so you're acting, you have that, directing, um, opera, all of that stuff can go into film, so it incorporates all of that. And we think it's important to bring that attention to as many people as possible. Yes, film is entertainment, don't get me wrong, I, I, you know, Batman versus Superman just made $200 million or whatever. It entertains, don't get me wrong, I get that. But it, but it is, it, it, it truly is a viable and important art form that should be appreciated and recognized for that. It's also extremely impactful and it can change a story, it can change a mind, it can uh, help people look at something a little differently and see something new. So we think by partnering with all these different entities, by having High School Day in the Dallas Arts District and working with Clyde Warren Park, the Crow Collection of Asian Art, the Dallas Museum of Art, the National Sculpture Center, by working with the Dallas Arts District and the City Performance Hall, uh, by working with Alamo Draft House and the Angelica Dallas and uh, the other theater companies that we work with, we're able to bring our story and our message to more people because we hope that their guests will learn about us because they in turn help promote our programming and vice versa. So we're trying to help people recognize there is a strong, viable, active, energized film community in Dallas and one that should be embraced and supported. What is the secret sauce then? Because, you know, we look at other film festivals around this country and around the world that doesn't embrace the arts community, the non-film arts community. So what is your secret sauce in those partnerships and why other film festivals don't do this? I, I, well, I can't speak for the other film festivals. I, you know, I don't know why they don't. I, I just, you know, Deb, I was, I'm a Dallasite. I was born and raised here. I love this city. Uh, and, and, and in my nonprofit career, as you mentioned, I've done this for 16 and a half years now in multiple venues, multiple arts groups. I just think that we're a better city and a better community. Uh, if we can work and partner and raise the bar for everyone. We, you know, the rising tide raises all ships. So I like to work with all the other groups and if we can, if it makes sense for both entities, if the timing works, I mean, a lot of it has to come out work right because they have their own programming and all that. You don't know how everything's going to work. But I just think by doing that, it, 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 it opens the door for more opportunities and more partnerships. Uh, in turn, we're all helping each other. Uh, and, and if anything that I can do and what I do on my side of the thing here at the, at the Film Society and with DIFF is trying to bring just more opportunities and partnerships to the table because we all win. Let's talk about those partnerships because there's a lot of partners in this film festival that's been here for 10 years. Yeah. You know, we're sitting down the hall from the Angelica Film Center that has been a partner for 10 years. So kind of talk to me about the partnerships that you guys have and how important are them and how do you foster them year after year? Well, it's just, in my mind, it's just good business. You treat people with respect. 
we acknowledge the fact that um, uh, you know we are a nonprofit, so we're trying to uh, secure the best rates possible or in-kind donations or whatever it may be. But you treat everyone with respect. Um, you say, here's what we're trying to do. This is what we'd like to do. Uh, we're excited about uh, building that relationship with the Angelica or People's Last Stand or the Arthur E. Benjamin Foundation or whomever it may be. And then you, you, you work with them and try to understand their needs and what they're trying to do. Uh, and then you try to help them meet those needs. Uh, just business. But if you do it well and you do it with respect, I think you can foster those relationships. And, you know, sometimes some things don't go well. Then if that does, if that happens, you acknowledge it and, and you move forward from it and you, you help make it better. Thinking about it on the last 10 years, what festival moment has really made you smile that really sticks with you very vividly? So if I come up to you and start talking about Diff or your wife does or someone, what, 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 what moment over the last 10 years really meant a lot to you that really makes Diff Diff for you? Okay, uh, so remember, I've, I've, this will be my fifth one, so I haven't been here for all ten. Well, you've been in the community, though. I have. And I'll say this. Okay, so of that, the, <laughs> I really loved sitting down to visit with Stephen Root, uh, 2012 or 2013, I forget which year it was. Steven Root is one of the great character actors. I mean, he's from The Office. He you know, had the red stapler, dodgeball. Uh, you know, he's done everything. And he's just the nicest man. And I sat down, I was able to visit with him at one point for about a half an hour. And we had a great time chatting and talking. He couldn't have been more humble and genuine uh, and just had a great time sitting and talking to him. That was an absolute blast. And then the second thing that jumps out to me the most is, uh, I mentioned earlier I was born and raised in Dallas. And one of my next door neighbors and one of my best friends growing up and is still one of my best friends is a guy named Doug Mankoff. So Doug is a filmmaker and a producer and lives in Los Angeles now and has had a terrific career in the film world and we've worked with Doug a handful of times. Uh, but in my second year, I think it was here, we showed one of Doug's films and I got to introduce Doug and introduce his film and then lead a Q&A with Doug afterwards. And that was an absolute joy for me because, um, like I said, he's a brother. Uh, I've known him literally since I was born. Uh, and to be able to do that together in front of everyone, in front of a lot of family and friends, and talk about his movies and his career in the film world, it was just uh, a, an absolute pleasure. Let's talk about your childhood a little. So, <laughs> how did film make an impact you growing up? And where, where around town did you grow up? Well, I, you know, I grew up here in Dallas. I was born and raised here, uh, kind of North Dallas uh, area. Went to school here and then went to school college in California, but came back. You know, film, I was always a film fan. I was never really interested in producing or making movies or acting or directing or anything like that. But I've always loved movies. So, you know, when VHS came out, you know, I started taping movies and thought that was the coolest thing. And, um, and, and then watching movies again and multiple times. And then uh, DVDs and Blu-rays. I just love movies and would watch them, uh, you know, a lot. But, you know, not like our film programming team might watch movies a lot but you know every weekend or you know every couple of weekends going to the theater I remember going to North Park 1 and 2 here to see Star Wars or The Godfather on uh, Godfather Part 3 on Christmas Day uh, 12 o'clock a lot of the Jewish community of Dallas was there so a lot of family fr friends there that time uh, so that was pretty fun um, and it just so film has always been a, 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 an outlet to resource a, a, a something fun for us for me um, I never really thought I'd end up in the film side of things, but the opportunity to join DIFF came up and, and I liked the, the idea of being in the film world and also working on a project that really I think is vital to the city of Dallas and I think can be a huge opportunity for the city of Dallas as we continue to grow and build over the next, you know, five and ten and twenty years. What is in your film library? What, you know, if we come over to your house and what, name me off three films that you would show us that is your favorite films that, in your opinion, is a must see. Uh, at my house right now, I don't have a huge collection, but I definitely have some movies. Uh, 
To Kill a Mockingbird, uh, one of my favorite movies, one of my favorite books of all time. That's certainly on the list. Blade Runner, uh, the Ridley Scott classic. And, um, I, I can't deny that I have a, a warm heart for a good romantic comedy. Uh, my wife likes that about me. Uh, you know, God help me, I'm going to say this on print. While you were sleeping, um, you know, just makes me laugh and makes me happy. Uh, so there's some great, you know, rom-coms in my library. Uh, but I can't deny that I also have pretty much all the good Marvel movies and got all the Matrix movies, all three of them, even though only one of them was really good. Uh, I've got all that. So that's, um, and there's some others. To Kill a Mockingbird, yeah. what really touched you about that film? What, what speaks to you about To Kill a Mockingbird? Gregory Peck. Um, just Gregory Peck's performance. Um, and just the story that they tell. Uh, I can't help but get teary-eyed. Uh, I'm going to get teary-eyed now talking about it. Uh, the courtroom scene at the end. Um, or not at the end, at the end of the courtroom scene. Uh, it's just America. It's well told. It's smart. Uh, it's respect for people and individuals that, that we need to honor and we don't always do that. Uh, it'd be nice if a lot more people would go back and watch that on a regular basis and remember, I think. Um, and I always smile when I see uh, uh, Robert Duvall in his first role, I see Boo Radley at the very end. Um, hard to believe that you know yeah. he, that, that, that he, he was in that. So it's just it's so well done, and 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 Peck is just brilliant in that. And we had you know Peck's daughter here a couple of years. Yes, ago. Yes, we did, and we loved that. And I got a chance to meet her, and it was such a it was an honor to be able to talk to her about her about her dad for a little while. That is awesome. So you know when I started out, you know I started out volunteering for AFI and then I was thrown into yeah. the volunteer coordinator position when the volunteer coordinator left yep. three days before the festival and Love you know, that. yeah I know it was exciting <laughs> throwing in a trial by fire so you know we were working out of this you know this model home for the W Hotel and brought our own laptops and stuff but people didn't really believe that it would have happened so you know what, what you know I mean I guess my question is is what do you, what do you, what's the next 10 years like? What is the next five years like? Well, you know, the next five years are an opportunity for us. We continue to build a great reputation with the filmmakers. Uh, they love coming to Dallas. Um, and they have a good time when they're here. You know, our challenge in a, in a big picture, and my, my focus is the, you know, on the, the marketing side and the development side is, is these things are not inexpensive to uh, produce. They don't make money. They're not they a many money. No, they don't. And, and, and my, my challenge, and it's a challenge, is to try to help people continue to understand the local population, the local corporations, the local individuals recognize that this is a very good thing for the city of Dallas. Uh, and, and in bringing that message to people and talking about how uh, it's the film festival can be an economic generator for the city of Dallas, uh, that it's a great uh, tourism and convention opportunity from the city of Dallas from the standpoint of people coming into town, uh, staying in our hotels, renting our cars, coming to see movies, spend, spending money in restaurants and so on. Focusing on that, once people really kind of grasp that, they, they, they buy, in, buy into the concept that, hey, if we have a really big and thriving and exciting film festival, that puts Dallas on the map, not only locally, but regionally, nationally, and internationally. Because we do have films from all over the country, and, and organizations like IndieWire and Huffington Post and, um, and Variety Magazine and Hollywood Reporter start writing about what's going on in Dallas, in the film world. And that's a good thing, and we all benefit from that. So my big focus, um, it's not very glamorous, I know that, is to really work hard trying to um, help um, the communities of Dallas, whether it's business, social, film, uh, wherever it may be, really recognize how important this can be for the city. And we've made some great progress on that, and but we have a ways to go, and I think we can do that. And I have people on my team uh, in, a, in a very strong board of directors that's going to help us to do that. Artistically, we want to continue to have great programming. James Faust and Sarah Harris, I think, are the best in the world uh, at film programming. I, they're fantastic. I agree. They're the gold uh, standard. 
and I think they have only gotten better at, at bringing great films to Dallas. And I think it shows every year. I just am more, more and more excited every year about the quality of the films that we're bringing in, the quality of the filmmakers that we're bringing in, and then ultimately the experience that these filmmakers have. Because then they walk away saying, man, that was a great film festival. I had fun in Dallas. I'm bringing my next movie. I'm telling my friends to come here. And so we're just going to continue to build on that. Uh, and then the next hope is that, you know, we'll grow. I think long term we'd love to see um, where we have our own theater, uh, that we can have more regularly scheduled programming uh, throughout the year. But, but that's hard and that's big capital campaigns. And so that's a long term goal. It's not going to happen anytime soon. That's a long term goal. All right, last question. Yeah. So Bart Weiss, who runs Dallas Video Fest, another partnering festival of diff. We love working with Bart. I, I love Bart. You know, um, I met so Bart playing in the, in the basketball league way before the film world. But way before the film world. So aside. he actually puts out his email address on the front page of videofest.org. And he says, email me if, if you want suggestions on what to see. Now, I'm not going to give out your email address here on the air. <laughs> but what would be if someone emailed you and said, Lee, three films I have to see at Diff this year, what would they be? Signs of Humanity, uh, Friday night, April 15th, City Performance Hall, Life Animated, uh, and A Fat Wreck. All right, there we go. There you go. Thanks very much. Absolutely, Dan.